and verse 20. And another said, I married a wife, newly married, and therefore I cannot come. Newly married cannot come. And I thank God that all my two sons who got married, we were able to worship God on a Sunday. And verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the poor, and the blind. And verse 22, And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. That means a lot of people still do not want to come to the supper. And verse 23, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the gates, and compel them to come in, that my house may be healed. For I say unto you, that none of these of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And this is what happened when God invited us to come into his kingdom. We are all giving a lot of you. This parable is not about buying land or that. It is to tell us that you allow the cares of the world, the things that you treasure most in your life, worthy to come into priority when you are seeking God. Simply say, the kingdom of God is open to invite everyone to come in. But many are giving all kind of lame excuses why they are not able to come. And the Lord warned them that those who have been asked to come and they do not come, they will not be allowed to come in. So if you have thoughts of these excuses in your mind as to why you cannot come to church on Sunday, why you feel like sleeping late on Sunday, why you want to do this and do that on Sunday, try to recapitulate what I've already spoken just now. This sermon is meant for all of us to search ourselves. Let this sermon, I pray, provoke you to examine yourself. Why? Because we do not want anyone of you to lose your soul. Because our soul is so precious to God that He allowed His one and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross so painfully, so be despised. And the ransom He paid is so substantial that no calculator in the world can even compute. And if you were to lose your soul, it is in vain, our Lord died. So let us provoke ourselves to examine ourselves and look at the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. How you can provoke yourself as well. Besides you examine yourself, which we always do when we take a lot of supper in the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we talk about 22, 23 onwards. We always say, examine yourself before you take the Lord's Supper. But now I want to provoke yourself to study, the Bible says, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly designing the word of truth. If you study yourself approved unto God, you will be able to rightly divide the word of truth and use it to strengthen your spiritual life and allow yourself to have the strength to oppose any opportune time that your mind wants to come up with an excuse to drink away of the Greek church. So this is the message that I want to share with all of you and I pray that it goes into your mind and stays there in your heart. Don't let it get out somewhere else. Because now we are living in various times where there are so many distractions that will take you away from the Lord. So that is all. Now flesh that we want to be determined. And as we stand up to sing Hymn 675, I am restored. I am restored.